right, we're at James Flop Sloppy Floyd, and we're about to get on the Marble Mine Trail, and we have intentionally come out here today in the rain to try out our gear. <laughs> So we're trying out, Julie's got her REI coat and this really cool new sun hat by Sunday morning, right? Yep. Okay, and I've got my little sun visor here too that's gonna help keep the water off my face. And I'm trying out a, is it Marmot? Is that how you yep. say it? I'm trying out a Marmot that I've gotten clearance on Amazon. And I've got my trusty umbrella here if it really downpours on us we're going to take a break under that and we'll let you know how that works so it's super actually pretty even though it's raining <laughs> we're in north georgia and we're gonna have ourselves a hike in the rain here we go we're going Okay, so we're walking up this little side trail because we're checking out the backcountry sites because every time Julie and I hike, we look and investigate what would be good for um, the kids, what we can bring the kids on and different variances of interest. Like some of the kids are only interested in uh, small short hikes and others are interested in long backpacking hikes. And this is just a cute little trail. It's flooded right now, of course, from the rain. But we are going to go check out this backcountry site. I don't know if it's cascading that much when it's not raining, but it sure is pretty. So is this back country site one? It's like, it'd be good for hammock camping in one tent, but not for more than one tent because it's not very even. It's really cute here by the river though. So this is back country site one. At Sloppy Floyd State Park. We're heading up to that country site too to check it out. See if it's somewhere we want to bring the kids. It's just a really short hike in, so we're thinking the some of the girls that don't like to do really long backpacking trips might be interested in this one. So this is Sloppy Floyd's backcountry site number two. You could do several hammocks, but really only room for about one tent. Yeah, maybe a tent there too. And there, oh yeah, maybe. A couple more spots, not very level, but, but doable. This is a cute little campsite by the river. This is actually quite pretty. Worth the climb, huh? Yeah. That's beautiful.
other side. Headed up towards the Penhody Trail. Look how beautiful. The beech trees have kept their leaves from the fall. And it's so pretty just out here in the middle of all the other brown and gray from winter. Right before spring peaks. And the river was on, or the stream was on both sides of the trail a while ago. It's so pretty coming up both sides. It's forking water's coming right down the trail. It's pretty amazing. We would never see this except if we hike in the rain. That's the only way. <laughs> and you can see down in the forest, it's just splintering lots of different stream paths all through that kind of upper wetland spreading out and freaking be gorgeous. It's the silver lining of walking in the rain. Because uh, sometimes the smartest way is the way that the path, the path of water will go. So it's actually the worst way to build a trail because then it just all roads. It gets washed yeah. out in the roads. It looks like we have our own little waterfall on the trail. <laughs> How beautiful is it though? So they installed a culvert here. Their options were a bridge or a culvert. So it wouldn't wash out the trail here. Now we can see it from the top going down. All the little fingers of stream. So pretty. Okay, we just climbed up to the top right here where it connects to the Penhody. We've gone 1.8 miles just climbing gradually. And now we're kind of at the top. Our rain gear is pretty saturated. <laughs> and then we're going to head to the Penhody Loop Trail up this way. So yeah, it's pretty wet. So, so far, this marmot rain jacket's working pretty good. We both unzipped our, our necklines a little bit to get some more ventilation because climbing up, we worked up our body temperatures. And I'm using just a regular visor here, and Julie is using actually a sun hat. Got the thing on the top there. Yep. yep I've got one too. We're going to try that for sun, sunny days, but we're trying just different stuff out to know. We haven't had to pull the umbrella out yet. Trying to remember to drink water. It's hard to remember to drink when it's cold and, and wet. <laughs> so trying to remember to stay hydrated. So we're headed back down to the state park again, which makes back down to the lake. It's super slippery from all the rain and the dead leaves and everything. It's hard to tell in the video, but it's super steep. Maybe we can tell going back up like that. Yeah. And pretty little flowers.
Okay, so here's the joy of hiking with a biologist. She knows cool tricks about animals and plants, so. So to know the difference between a centipede and a millipede, you look at the segments and see how many legs are attached to each segment. And this one, they're paired, so they have two, two legs per segment, so it's more likely a millipede. But we are gonna check with our local entomologist and make sure that's pretty cool. Spring fauna. Look at that. Oh. So he has two segments per black segment. Uh, two legs per two legs per black segment. How interesting. Mm. All the way up that tree. Let's see some of them close up.